Biome is a large community of plants and animals that occupies a distinct region. A terrestrial biome, such as the tundra, is typically defined by its climate and dominant vegetation. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms, such as plants, animals, and microbes, that exist around and work as a system with non-living components of their environment, such as air, water, and mineral soil. The Arctic tundra is in the northernmost part of the world. It supports a variety of animal and plant life. It is always very cold and windy at a constant temperature of 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Abiotic factors are the non-living things that affect the ecosystem. Strong wind is one of these factors. It keeps the tundra frozen by constantly moving the air through it. The constant permafrost layer is another abiotic factor. It is a layer of frozen soil mixture that never melts, which prevents life from growing in the tundra. Biotic factors are living things that affect the ecosystem. Examples of these factors include low-growing shrubs, lichen, and the active layer, which is a thin layer of soil in which plants actually have the ability to grow. There are also many animals in the Arctic, such as large land animals like the polar bear, musk oxen, and caribou. Sea creatures include whales, seals, and walrus. The plants help to support life in the tundra, where the animals live and occupy the space while interacting with the environment. Limiting factors are mechanisms that can affect a biome. There is density dependent, which relies on the population of organisms in the biome, and independent, which is constant. The most common dependent factors are competition for food and space. Both can become scarcer depending on how large the population is. Temperature and weather are always independent factors. The temperature is a constant low and the strong winds are ever present. There are many different organisms that live in the tundra. The producers are low-growing shrubs and lichen such as arctic moss, arctic willow, phytoplankton, and bearberry. The consumers that occupy the tundra come in many different levels. The lowest level is primary, which contains the herbivores, such as the caribou and lemmings. The secondary level contains the snowy owl and the seals. The highest level is the tertiary level, which consists of the larger predatory animals such as polar bears, arctic foxes, and wolves. This food web shows over 15 different organisms that live in the tundra and how they coexist with one another. The tundra is full of predator-to-prey relationships that go along with the natural cycles of life. The wolves hunt the caribou for food. The caribou eats the plants so the wolves get the energy that the caribou had obtained. Likewise, the polar bear is a predator of the arctic fox. The fox feeds on smaller prey such as rodents so the polar bear gets its energy from the fox and its prey. These are beneficial to the environment as they help to keep the balance of life and distribute the energy. This energy pyramid shows how the energy is distributed throughout the different levels as organisms are being consumed by other organisms. The biomass pyramid is like the energy pyramid, except it shows the total mass of the organisms in each level of the food chain. Human activity has and will have great impacts on this ecosystem. Air pollution and global warming are among the greatest threats for the tundra. Air pollution can contaminate the lichen, which is a significant food source for many of the animals, or at least the animals that are then consumed by other animals. This contamination would lead to an imbalance in the animal ratios and disrupt the normal cycles, which could have detrimental effects for some of the organisms. In extreme cases, this might even lead to extinction for some more rare animals if they are not able to get sufficient amounts of food. Global warming is the most relevant disaster that could occur that is detrimental to the tundra. 
it would melt the permafrost, which would release its organic compounds and be the end of the tundra. If this were to occur, the tundra would be slow to get back to its frozen state. After the permafrost was frozen again, the small plants would be the first to return into the ecosystem, followed by the animals that feed off them. The larger animals would then return once there was enough small animals to sustain their life. Oh.